Panhandling is perhaps the most public way to collect money on a street corner with a sign. You're a captive audience in your car. Most panhandlers might look at you, might wait for a hint that you'll donate, then approach your car. That does not seem to be the strategy, though, of members of one group in Fort Wayne who call themselves the Sandbox Veterans. They have been around for a couple of years saying they help Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. But lots of people wonder where this money is going, and folks also wonder about their aggressive tactics, their approach to you on the streets. In a 15 Finds Out special report, Adam Widener has been investigating the real story of the Sandbox Veterans. We're calling this Patriots or Panhandlers. Adam? The Sandbox veterans ask for your donation from street corners, medians, and near intersections. You might have encountered them. Their style and approach is seen as aggressive, and that's where we start our investigation. Can they do what they do the way they do it? If you hop in a car with Sam Fennessy, just kind of looking at, at the traffic, kind of looking around, and come across the Sandbox veterans, he's weaving in and out of traffic. You'll hear some frustration. And then I see uh, this gentleman standing here, probably about six inches away from my window. He was just kind of like giving me the eye, like, you know, you need to give me money. Uh, you know, is this guy legitimate? His concerns are different than those of your average driver. So I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, recently, I just got out uh, January 2012. It kind of made me wonder, you know, where is this money going? Are they really making any efforts to help out with our service members? And he's not alone. Since 15 Finds Out investigated Fort Wayne panhandlers one year ago, you uh, call me? we've received dozens of emails and calls urging us to investigate the so-called sandbox veterans. One of those callers, they are very aggressive, was Jody West. She lives in DuPont Lake's apartments and sees the Sandbox veterans standing near her complex's exit a lot. They're there seven days a week. They run out in front of you, behind you. They will run right up to your car and hold their can out. They have a lot of money. I don't think most people would have that much time to spend on an organization to collect money and just the two same guys in the same location continuously. It's just something doesn't feel right about it. The Sandbox veterans have been collecting money around Fort Wayne for years, and the city makes it clear that their methods are illegal. So if uh, the person uh, trying to solicit is in the street or along the sidewalk, along the park strip in a median, those are areas the, that would not be allowed to, uh, to try to solicit money from from motorists who are trying to get from point A to point B. Our police department certainly has uh, every right to uh, look at the safety component. If they feel a situation uh, needs to be looked at, they certainly will. Uh, they also would have the, uh, the opportunity to uh, issue a citation if they feel that's necessary. And they have. Our cameras found a Fort Wayne officer confronting the sandbox veterans when they were panhandling around a median near Coldwater and DuPont. And that wasn't the first run-in with the cops either. Adam Silvani is one of the Sandbox volunteers 15 Finds Out has seen collecting money several times this past year. Silvani received two citations in the past six months. One for panhandling in August was later dismissed. Another for unlawfully stopping or standing on a sidewalk in December with a court date next week. So you cannot solicit donations from occupants inside of a car on a public road. It, but if it's over... Can I see your driver's yeah. The Sandbox veterans posted this YouTube video of what they call police harassment. Here's their defense. Prosecuting well, attorney and a city controller said to carry this, because it's a state license, that's our nonprofit. Okay. And to carry this letter, which is basically, she's over the street. Her name's Susie Sims. Okay. Uh, and she said, you don't need a permit, and you guys are good. Taking a closer look at that letter, the city official writes, quote, the Sandbox Veterans does not require a permit to collections. Not-for-profit organizations are not required to get a permit, end quote. But that hasn't stopped police from responding to complaints. Cannot solicit donations from occupants on the road. Unless you are overturned by the city government, okay. what I'm telling you. Okay, good enough. I'll be back with you in a minute. I don't understand that. City leaders have seen this video and say Silvani is misrepresenting what they told him. An email uh, was communicated to them that indicated that they would not uh, need a permit to solicit funds. 
but it did not say that they had the right to solicit funds in an area that's prohibited by city code. Sometimes the sandbox veterans stand on private property like this median in the Chapel Ridge Shopping Center. It's owned by Mike's Car Wash, but since the end of December, the group stopped collecting donations here. The reason? A manager of Mike's tells me he was hearing so many complaints from customers driving around this area, he was worried the sandbox veterans were hurting his business. So he called the cops on him. They were kicked off private property and haven't been back since. Still, the incident at Chapel Ridge and confrontations with the cops haven't stopped the group. 15 finds out has spotted them on East DuPont Road a lot lately, leaving people like West wishing they would move their aggressive tactics away from her complex. I really hope that somebody can move them to either another location or assure us that the money is going to the Sandbox Veterans. A man named Roger Locke is the head of the Sandbox Veterans. In an email, Locke told me he believes the city has violated his right to freedom of speech and cites corruption. He uses as an example the fire department, which collects money from drivers in the same way during its annual boot drive for muscular dystrophy. Sandbox veterans collect donations from generous drivers all around Fort Wayne. They say the money goes to help Iraq and Afghanistan vets with PTSD. Members of the group walk up to vehicles at stoplights in what lots of people consider an aggressive way. But as 15 finds out exclusively reported earlier this week, city leaders say their tactics aren't just aggressive, they're illegal. So what does the organization have to say about it? News Channel 15's Adam Widener continues our series of investigations, Patriots or Panhandlers. Through calls, emails, even off-the-record conversations, 15 Finds Out has desperately tried to get the leaders of the Sandbox Veterans to sit down on camera to talk about their organization. What we found was although the group collects your money in perhaps the most public way, they're far less willing to publicly outline exactly where that money is going. It's easy to see the Sandbox Veterans collect donations. City leaders say their methods violate city code, and local drivers call it very aggressive. They run out in front of you, behind you. They will run right up to your car and hold their can out. But getting the group's leaders to sit down for an interview, hey guys, wasn't so simple. No comment. You guys know. 15 Finds Out has been emailing back and forth with Roger Locke. He's listed as the head of the Sandbox Veterans. Locke initially referred us to his organization's website and didn't want to do an interview, saying he and an attorney are preparing a civil action suit against the city of Fort Wayne, seeking $3.2 million for what he calls a violation of his group's freedom of speech. After several other emails, Locke said he would do an interview and make his financial records public after the city gets his lawsuit filing. But a city spokesman tells 15 Finds Out city attorneys have no record of any lawsuit. And there are still so many questions in the community, like this one from Marine veteran Sam Fennessy. It kind of made me wonder, you know, where is this money going? Are they really making any efforts to help out with our service members? So we approached the Sandbox veterans with a camera when they were on East DuPont Road. Before we could get there, hey guys. they hopped in a van and drove off. So we followed them to the intersection of Clinton Street and Lima Road. Here's the response this nonprofit organization gave us. Private property, you guys can't be here right now. Okay, we just, we just want to ask you a couple questions nope. about the organization. Nope. nope. I didn't know if you guys saw us. We've so got about five seconds to get off the property before we have an issue. According to Allen County records, we were actually standing on city property. Either way, I then stepped back on the sidewalk with cameraman Ross Kinsey. I didn't know if you guys saw us, so we just want to ask a couple questions. Yeah, no, no comment. You guys know. I mean, we just have a couple questions about your organization. There's a lot of people who have questions. Yeah, you can do that by phone. Okay, what's your number? Uh, it's online. Adam, could you just talk about the organization? Oh, you can't just follow people around. You have email address and everything, so no, no comment. You guys can't be on a property. All right. 
I mean, if people have questions about the organization, if it's legitimate or not, if it is legitimate, why wouldn't you want to say anything about it? This afternoon, I tried calling the number on the Sandbox Veterans' former Facebook page and was hung up on. Since my encounter with the group, their Facebook page is now nowhere to be found. If you have concerns about the legitimacy of the Sandbox Veterans, the State Attorney General's Office wants to hear from you. You can file a complaint by calling 1-800-382-5516. I'm told your complaints could encourage the Attorney General to launch an investigation. On the other hand, if the Sandbox Veterans have helped you or any veteran you know, we definitely want to tell your story as part of our investigation. Please call the 15 Finds Out hotline at 260-481-1515, extension 1610. State leaders say since our story last week, they've seen our footage and heard from a handful of you who have filed formal complaints against the Sandbox Veterans. Because of that, I can report tonight the Attorney General's Office has now launched its own investigation into the Sandbox veterans. City leaders call their tactics illegal. Groups and individuals uh, should not be soliciting for money uh, for motorists in vehicles. Drivers call them aggressive. He's weaving in and out of traffic. People are just kind of like giving him the look like, what are you doing here? You're invading my privacy. And while they may collect your money publicly... No comment. You guys, no. The Sandbox veterans are far less willing to outline where your donations are going. So got about five seconds to get off the property before we have an issue. After watching our special reports, a handful of your complaints made it here to the Attorney General's office in Indianapolis. Leaders here will now be trying to contact the Sandbox veterans as the first step in its own investigation. See what they have to say about the complaints and get as much information as we can. Abby Kuzma is the Director of Consumer Protection for Indiana's Attorney General's Office. We would look for waste of assets, we look for fraudulent sorts of activity. If they're being deceptive in, in their practices in terms of solicitation or uh, you know other things that they might be doing, we could look into that as well. The Sandbox veterans have made it difficult to find their financial records. The group is not recognized as a nonprofit or 501c3 with the federal government, but they are listed as a nonprofit with the state, something that's much easier to get and has fewer regulations. A 501c3's financial records are public, whereas to be a nonprofit with the state, a group doesn't even have to provide financial records. We cannot get uh, typically very much information other than the articles and bylaws about an organization that's filed with the state if they're not a 501c3. And of course you don't have to be a 501c3. There's no requirement that you apply with the federal government. But it does give the, the general public less information about you and you have less advantages in terms of uh, being a charitable organization as well. The leaders of the Sandbox veterans have a personal background with finances and criminal activity that's important for donors to understand. Roger Locke is the organization's director. He incorporated the Sandbox Veterans of America in 2011. Locke personally filed for bankruptcy just nine years earlier in 2002, and a judge in Illinois convicted him of retail theft in 1992. As for Adam Silvani, he also filed for bankruptcy in 2002, and court records say Silvani pleaded guilty to failing to support a dependent child in 2008, meaning he's a convicted felon. His ex-wife, Tiana Patti, says since his probation ended, he stopped paying child support once again this past year. He hasn't paid child support in how long, and he says he's trying to help veterans. I don't understand why he would help veterans when he doesn't even help his own children. As for the Attorney General's Office investigation, state leaders say they won't leave out any questions that need asked. We'll be looking for verification of information, you know, just a, a, a wide variety of uh, possible p topics depending on what kind of information we get back. We want to uh, caution people not to feel pressured to give when somebody is being aggressive. Uh, that's not a good sign. Frankly, it's a red flag for us. A spokesman with the Fort Wayne Police Department tells me officers responded to a complaint about two people selling Bibles door to door yesterday. He says it was the same two men that have been collecting money for the Sandbox veterans. 
The Attorney General's office is unsure how long its investigation into the Sandbox veterans will take, but we'll update you as soon as more information becomes available.